So guys, we know how you love learning new football skills, and in today's video, we put together a tutorial featuring 69 of them. Nice. So you can just go learn. It's an hour, and it's awesome. Enjoy. And we start out with something we can call the outside step over double tap, I guess, which is also probably the flashiest move on the list. And okay, it might look a little bit unnecessarily flashy, but the thing is that doing all of this also helps sell the move to the defender, so they will hopefully put all of their weight on one foot, leaving a lot of open space for you to exploit. Now, what you basically do here is that if you want to go that direction, you're facing the defender, you make an outside step over with one foot, and then you drop your shoulder and you allow the other foot to continue flowing that direction. You tap the ball into the first foot, and then tap it that way. It's basically a little double tap, tap, tap. And the thing is that by doing the step over, Phil's gonna put his weight here, and then he's gonna follow again with a little tap, more weight there. So the little tap away means that he's fully fixated. You've got a lot of space to run into. Tap, tap, boom, boom, shake the room. Next up is something that's widely known as a reverse step over, which is in fact just fill an inside step over with a body fade. Now it works great to really make the defender believe that you're gonna make a touch in that direction, but that's the whole thing. You're gonna make them believe that, but you're just gonna step over the ball and then use the change in momentum to buy yourself a little bit of time to do your thing. Now it works really well if you slow down because then if you make that aggressive step over, it also makes the defender feel that he or she needs to commit a lot of effort trying to catch you and that's your moment to strike. So make sure that you step over the ball, you drop your shoulder with a little bit of power, and then once you do that, you plant your foot, that the change in momentum is also very powerful, giving you the most possible time to put in the cross, make a pass, look up, see what to do. Then we have something we can call the stop and go. And I realized that it might not be the most visually appealing skill on the list, but hey, it works, so it's not stupid. And the reason it works, right, is that especially if you're running at speed, the defender's next to you, you're running here, and they see you stepping on the ball with your soul. They're gonna think he's gonna stop. I have to stop as well, slam the brakes in order to not look completely ridiculous. So he or she's gonna stop, but you're not gonna stop. Yeah, you're stepping on the ball, but your body momentum is going that direction, so you're just gonna let your other leg flow with you and just tap it out. Basically, tap, tap. Which means that the defender will be stopping, you'll be continuing in that direction. Phil, just like that, boom, boom. And the fourth move is something we can call the fake shot double tap, which is, in essence, for those who figured it out, it is basically the stop and go, but with a fake shot instead. And just like that, this uses the fact that hopefully the defender is gonna flinch and then try to recover when you do the fake shot and the little tap. So what you essentially do here is that you set yourself up for a shot, you load up, but instead of hitting the ball, you're just gonna make a little tap in the opposite direction. Now then, if the defender is a good defender, they're most likely gonna think, okay, I smell something fishy going on here. So they're just gonna try and stick out a leg, try and cover this area to prevent you from taking a shot, right? But you know what's going on. So after you take that little initial first touch, they're gonna stick out the leg. You're just gonna take a little tap to the other direction, opening up a big load of space for you so you can take the shot and score, because obviously you're a baller. You've been watching Unisport videos, so you know what you're doing. So fake shot, boom, 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 and shot. We have the cheeky little drag back panna, which is a super solid little move if you need to get out of a tight situation where there's a defender close to you rushing in, trying to be a proper jerk and take the ball away from you. I mean, the nerve on this guy, right? Anyways, the way this works is that if Phil is coming in, right, sticking out a foot to try and block the ball, I can just drag the back with my weak foot and just tap it through his legs to get the little panna. And the way this works is that you don't have to do it with a lot of force or do like super lightning speed, quick feet. No, it's all about finding the right timing. So Phil, you come in again, whoop, whoop. See that? It doesn't have to be harder than that. So basically come in, if you feel his or her presence there, boom, whoop, whoop. 
It's the sound of the police. Because that was a crime against Phil. I'm, I'm sorry, man. We'll start out with a simple but extremely effective move that our guy Will John actually mentioned to me a few years back. It's not really that an official name, I think, so let's call it the Will John Get Past the Defender 3000. <laughs> Funny, right? Anyways, it's great to actually turn on the defender while protecting the ball because facing the defender is what you want. That gives you a lot of options. So what you basically do is that with the defender in your back, you use the foot that's furthest away from the defender to step over the ball and then turn your body to face them. They might then think that this is a great option for them to come in and try and steal the ball, but in reality, it's a great option for you to roast them with, for instance, a cheeky little croquetta. So it looks like this. Turn, whoop, see ya. move to lose the defender breathing down your neck is to do this 90 degree sole roll turn. And basically what you do is that you take the sole of the foot furthest away from the direction you want to go and just make a quick little turn. And thinking about it, this is actually a, well, half a Marseille turn. So it's a bit quicker and really effective. But if you want to roast the defender even harder, you can deep fry, <laughs> terrible joke, him or her by adding a little directional touch. Because when you do the sole roll and the defender follows, his or her balance is gonna be going in that direction with the weight on that foot, meaning that all they can do is watch as you twist and run away in the other direction while they're reenacting Bambi on ice. So if you remember Eden Hazard making Pablo Zavaleta sit down, you know what's coming. Because this move is a great way to shake off the defender without even touching the ball. So if he or she is chasing you and you're running towards the ball, you have the advantage because every time you move, they are going to react, most likely at least, if they're good defenders. Now here, you're gonna basically throw a couple of little body feints, shoulder drops in either direction, faking that you're gonna go that way all while you're watching them with the corner of your eye. Because when you can see that they commit, they take the bait and they put their weight on one foot. That's your moment to strike and you're just gonna take a little touch in the opposite direction. I'm sorry for ruining your life. Second to last move is a bit of a classic and oh so pretty. It's the McGiddy spin done by Aiden McGee, my man. Anyways, that was embarrassing. But what you do here is that you approach the ball and then you step over the ball and stop it with the inside of your foot in the direction you want to go. Now, as you do that, you also turn your body so your back is towards the direction you want to go. Then you step over the ball with the other foot and push it away with the outside of that foot. And in motion, it looks like this. we've got the, I guess, sole roll, stop, cut, which is a little bit similar to the second trick in the sense that you make a move in one direction only to cut and move back in the opposite direction. And what you basically do here is that you make a sole roll over the ball and as you finish the roll, you put your foot down strongly into the ground, which means that the ball will stop and bounce a little bit back in that direction. What's also good about this is that then once your support leg hits the ground, you're basically able to accelerate and change directions quickly in that direction. So if we got the defender behind you, it means that you do this, hop, and then you're off.
the bonus move, I'm gonna show you how to do the AK-3000. So the first step is that you don't do it because it's not gonna work in a game. But if you insist, I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you got your back against the opponent, you flick the ball up with one leg and then you turn away from the ball and then you hit the ball with the outside of your knee and then extend your leg, kick the ball around the defender. And if you somehow manage to pull this off in a game, the defender should ack away all of his stuff and quit no, football. No, no, you didn't. Th Come on, that was no pill. Too late. Okay, so my, my first skill is gonna be the easy one of step over. You just one step over and go in the over direction. Why I use that? First, it's very fast to put. So when a defender comes to you, you can quickly do that and change your direction. Because sometimes your defender is gonna come really fast to you and you have no many time to go one, two, three or making something flashy. If you go face a defender who gonna be very fast. That's me, I'm very fast. <laughs> and have a- He's a laughing. <laughs> you have to use your whole body because if you just use your leg, a good defender, we will see you're not gonna go in this way. You have to use your whole body without losing power, without losing speed. So you have to go and directly place your foot like change your direction dog. Yes, so on the toe, yeah. boom, and then move change. on. Yes. Exactly. You come to him, uh -huh. tack, tack. And he's gone. I'm not that fast as I thought I was. <laughs> and he's still laughing. <laughs> it was the most efficient skill of Zidane. When I win my first duel versus a defender and I win this, so I place myself over and go. The second time I will face to him, I will go directly. Right, because I'm expecting you go that yeah. way. See, that's an even better advice. Basically, guys, mix it up. You might land the first skill, mix it up the next time so the, def the defender knows, doesn't know what's coming for the third time. And maybe if you have many distance, you can place one, two, and go into the other side. The croqueta for me, it's a very good skill because you can use it in very different situations. The first one, when I use it the most, it's when I'm stopped. Okay. Face to face a defender. Yeah. In this situation, you're maybe faster than me when we start. Yeah. Okay. So I need something to beat this difference. This weakness I have, I have something to beat. So I will wait my defender to come to me. So when it starts, I'm going to put my croqueta and go. So basically what you're saying is that the moment I make my movement as the defender, that's the moment you do the zack zack. Yeah, okay. exactly. The other one, it's when I'm moving and the defender is coming to me and he makes the first movement and also I will do the croqueta. Always waiting the first movement of the defender. Other things, it's when I have to face one, two defenders and I am in a bad situation. Maybe between them, but it's very difficult, but the most of the time I'm gonna try to go in one side of them, in their right or in their left. When I use the croqueta, the most important thing is it's when you start before pushing the ball. So it's like, tack, tack. So you basically jump, push the ball out. Exactly. Okay. So I jump first and I'm pushing the ball after that. Why I'm doing that? If I jump, I can go directly without pushing my... Then you beat me with that one move. Yeah. So this move is very easy to do, it's just the timing. You have to, to have the good timing, read correctly the defender. You have to know when he friend you, because sometimes he's gonna make you a friend and you don't have to come, because if you make him a friend and you go, it's, <laughs> it's easy, I just go here, yeah, take the ball. It's over. Iniesta use it a lot because when you are in the bad situation, you can go outside the situation very quickly. So for me, it's one of the most efficient skills in the world. And that's why the best, one of the best players in the world uses. Michael Laudrup. So the last one is gonna be uh, the first touch. This one, I think it's the one everybody have to use it. If you are defender or middle fire or striker. So this one, it's what you have to do when you're gonna touch a ball for the first time, when you receive a pass. So you have your defender in your back. So very close of you. So you have to fight 
with your defender, like Lukaku, he's doing very well. So you just have to control him with your hands or with your arms, never with your uh, shoulder. Because if you use your shoulder, if he moves, you're gonna lose control of your body. So always with your arms. You don't have to pull him because he's fought, just control him. So when we will receive the ball, you have to indicate to your defender when we gonna go. It's like, okay, tack, and the ball will come here, you go in the other side. And the fact you control him, he's gonna just feel you. So if you go like that, he's gonna follow you every time. So when you change your direction, he will not be as fast as you to put his foot and change his balance and starts. So after that, you just have to choose one direction. This or this, it's just the first touch can eliminate every defender, every player at the moment you control your defender. Im imagine I want really to go in this way. I'm gonna control him to go in this way. Up, and I'm going this way. You just have to train to use your outside side of your foot, your inside side of your foot. You can train to use your weak foot. You can train to use your uh, sommel in français. Oh. We start off with Quaresma's little side roll tap away move against Pasakche here, which is super effective because basically you're doing two sharp directional changes right after each other. And the defender has got absolutely no chance if you can land this. So the way this works is that if the defender is right in front of you, you can take a little touch forward and then you basically roll the ball with the sole of your strong foot towards your weak foot. Now, the second you then put your rolling foot down, you tap the ball away with your weak foot. Of course, body movement needs to be there in order to really fool the defender. But as you can see, I drag Phil over here, he puts his weight there and boom, I tap the ball away and I'm out. Next up, we have a move from one of my favorite Portuguese players, Nani. He was, he was pretty good, right? I guess we can call it the roll, step over, tap. Let's call it that. Anyway, it has a lot of similarities with the first skill, but how this works is that if the defender is a little bit in front of you, you're on the wing, you can basically roll the ball forward 45 degrees across your body. Then the second your rolling foot hits the ground, you do an outside step over, fixating the defender, and then you just tap the ball away, beating him or her. It's, it's very easy on paper. You just gotta get the whole movement where you roll, boom, that has to be really quick. So the way this works is bam, 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 la voce. Next up, we've got one of those skills that we just, I mean, we had to include it in this video, right? The Ronaldo chop. It's definitely not a move that you can use anywhere on the pitch or in any situation, but when the situation is there, it's really, really effective to change direction sharply and just leave the defender running. It's only good when you're running at a decent amount of speed, because if you're running here, boom, the defender comes in, you do the chop and say goodbye to the defender. The technique, uh, at least the way I do it, is that you have to plant your strong foot or the chopping foot powerfully in the ground, almost as if you're slicing or chopping through the side of the ball. It sounds a little bit weird, but think of it as you do this little scissor movement where you almost force the ball, boom, that direction. You can do it in many ways, uh, but at least that's the technique I use and I think CR7 uses. But the basic idea is that you come, you run, boom, boom, chop. <laughs> Then we come to Joao Felix, who, especially in his younger days, really liked to do the Matthews feint. Now, the Matthews feint is it's one of the oldest tricks in the book, but also one of the simplest change of direction moves you can find. But it works. Apparently, they also do it in futsal a lot, right? So, so, you know, it works all across the plate. But the way you do this is that, especially if you're an inverted winger, you can do it all over the pitch. Basically, you take one or two touches with the instep of your foot, drop your shoulder a little bit, and hopefully that move, where you're indicating you're going that direction, will fixate the defender's body weight to that side. Now, hopefully they will also try and put out a leg to block your path, leaving the legs open for you to then shift your body weight and get the panna, go that direction. So basically, all you have to do is a little touch or two out here, and then you change your direction. Now, the only important thing to remember is that 
you shouldn't take a touch and then wait and then make the change of direction. It should be one fluid motion like that. Then just remember to drop the shoulder to sell your move going that direction and it's gonna look like this. off with Figo toying with the poor defender in a move that we can call the Figo Special 4000, I guess. Let us know if you have a better name in the comment section right down below. But anyways, if you're being slowed down a little bit on the wing, you're not running at the defender with full speed, you can pull out this bit of trickery where you sell the defender not once, but twice. So what you do here is that if you're approaching them, you can then make this roll step over to the side fooling the defender to go that way, then you push the ball backwards, open your body off for a cross, making them commit, and then basically, instead of crossing, you do shot feint, opening up a lot of space for you to run into. And it is a little bit tricky because you have to get the roll right. Rolling it with the sole of your foot, stepping over, take one step, push back, cross, shot feint, and off you go. And if you can land this, you will be the winger god of mischief, poor defender. First up, we have what I call the roll step over, which is basically a really cool looking move, but it's also something I would typically advise you to do when you have the defender right in front of you and you need to change direction with a bit of a change of pace as well. So what you do if the defender is coming towards you, you basically take the ball and roll it a little bit across your body with your foot. And then to make sure that you get the proper acceleration away, you roll the ball and then you step over it with the other foot, basically letting it roll between your legs. Because apart from then, you know, making the trick look really cool, you also change your body direction. And once you step over, you have your other leg solidly planted in the ground in the direction you want to go so you can really accelerate away. So it looks something like this. Secondly, we have the roll turn, which might seem slightly difficult and a little bit risky at first, but when you get it under your skin, it's actually very effective to turn on the spot while also protecting the ball relatively effectively. See, when you have a defender to either your right or your left, you have your back to him, you then take a strong foot, you roll the ball slightly across your body, and then you take the momentum of the rolling foot put it in front of the ball, because as you can see right now, I'm shielding the ball pretty effectively against Phil here. If he wants the ball, he has to give a free kick. So, when you do the roll, you put your foot down, and then you start turning your body. When you do that, you then push the ball away in a 90 degree motion with the toe of the other foot. Now again, it's a bit risky if you let the ball roll too far, you don't protect it well enough with your rolling foot. So go out to the pitch, Practice it against the cone so you really get it under your skin until you can take it on the pitch and wreak havoc on a guy like Phil here. Yeah. My last soul roll that I really like is something we can call the soul roll stop, which is basically something that's kind of hard to learn at first, at least it was tricky for me, but when you land it, it's pretty cool to wrong foot the defender, set him off balance, especially if you're stuck standing still on the sideline. So Phil is blocking my path, I want to go that direction, I can't. So I pull off the side roll stop. Basically, I roll the ball under my foot, I put my foot down, let the ball hit it to either stop it or push it back in that direction. Because when I do this, you can see Phil expects me to go that way, but I go the other direction, buy myself some space to go into. So at speed, it looks something like this. Boom, boom, shake the room. The first skill is something we can call the shield feint roll, which is really useful if you've got a defender in your back or to the side. Today, it's gonna be Phil. Here, you're gonna be shielding the ball with your body. And what you wanna do here is create a little body feint and a roll forward, and then immediately after roll the ball backwards in the other direction with a sole roll. And because you then lost the defender, he's going away, and you got time to do the right thing with the ball. Even if they recover and come back at you, it's gonna be too late. So Phil, come in, come in. So here, we do that. <laughs> Secondly, we have what I guess many people would call the Neymar 
chop. And this is really effective because once again, if you have the defender here, you're gonna fixate their weight going that direction with the roll and then change direction with the chop. Now again, it's important that you do the change of direction with purpose here. So when you make that roll, it needs to be a powerful roll and then boom, you also need to really plant that chopping foot in the ground, get some distance on the chop to clear you off the defender. And if you can do this in a match, you, my friend, will now be a certified butcher. Next up, we have the L-drag, which is super nice if the... <laughs> which is super nice if the defender is coming, closing you down, running at a bit of speed, especially coming from behind or a bit from the side. Because here, if we take a touch, Phil is coming in, I can just drag the ball back with the sole of my foot and tap it out behind me with the instep of the same foot in this 90 degree angle. So a little bit, boom, boom, that's it. Now, it's really nice because if Phil's running that way, boom, he has momentum going that direction. But if I do the L-drag, now my momentum is going that way and Phil is absolutely screwed. Finally, also, you can do the L-drag pretty quickly if you just like, boom, snappy little move. And also, if Phil's coming in this way, trying to take the ball, I have my body between him and the ball at all times, meaning that if he wants it, he has to go through me and I will get a free kick. But the thing is, he's not gonna touch me because I'm gone, Phil, I'm gone. Four is what we can call the tap inside tap, or basically the reverse croquetta. Now you guys all know la croquetta, right? You have the defender, you slide the ball across and around them. And this is essentially the same motion, just done in reverse. Now, of course, you're not gonna do it around the defender, but it's really effective if you're running towards the line, you're being closed down and you can just like hack, hack, go around them like that. So basically here you have to slide the ball quickly with one foot into the other that you angle backwards, again, making this 90 degree angle exit. And I know, it's difficult to do, especially if you're running a bit of speed. But if you can land this in a match, <laughs> you're gonna leave the defender completely hanging. And finally, we have the Mares Soul Roll, which is as effective as it's simple. And Phil, it's very simple. What you're looking at is basically a fake shot with a little directional roll to exit the move. And this is effective because once you do the fake shot, if you do it properly at least, the defender will most likely flinch, leaving you with a lot. <laughs> Hopefully they won't do that. Then you can't do anything. You're rolling on the ground laughing. Now anyways, if they flinch, it leaves you a lot of open space to just run into because when they're going like this, they can't really react and follow you that quickly. So you're gonna buy yourself those valuable couple of milliseconds. So basically the move is a fake shot, but instead of stopping your foot, you're just gonna continue the motion naturally on the top of the ball, roll it across the body, a little bit of an angle sole roll to exit the move. And this is more effective than just fake shot down on the ground and then roll. Again, it's about buying yourself that momentum, those little few extra seconds so you can clear the defender and then you're gonna score, because you're awesome. First up, we have the Berber spin, which is a move I've been mesmerized by ever since Dimitar Berbatov did it against West Ham back in 2008. Ball, through to Berbatov, can keep it in. Oh, magnificent skill from Berbatov, Ronaldo! Oh dear, that is absolutely world-class. Dimitar Berbatov made it with some extraordinary skill. And then again, Mason Greenwood, also against West Ham here in 2021. But it's a very cool move where you can chase the ball and you stick out your foot, you can stop it either by stepping on it or simply just putting your foot down behind it, stopping it with your instep. And you spin your body, constantly facing the ball in a 90 degree angle with the ball being the pivot point. So stop the ball, spin your body, and then you use the same foot to flick the ball up and away in the direction you want to go. Now this move works best when the defender is not super close and coming either from the back or a little bit from the front. So if Phil comes in, I stop the ball and then I can flick it over him because then the directional change is gonna catch Phil a little bit flat footed so I have some space to operate in behind him. Now of course you don't have to do the flick, but it looks the coolest. It's what Berbatov did. So you really have to get under the ball, use the momentum off the turn to get it up 
and over the defender's leg. Secondly, we have the scoop turn, which is quite cool and somewhat effective if you need to turn on a very tight spot and the defender is pretty close to you. What you basically do here is that you gently almost caress the edge of the ball in this circle-like motion so you don't kick it, you scoop it round. And you can do some filthy stuff with this. Basically, you start approaching the ball using the back part of your midfoot, you touch it, and then you, in this scooping motion, spin on your weak foot to give a circle-like motion to the ball. Now it's going to start rotating and you're going to end up actually touching it with your toes, which is also going to make it a little bit easier to direct and adjust the angle of the exit of the scoop when the defender comes in. So again, it's important that you don't make two kicks. That's not the same move, but you scoop it. So come in here a bit. So you can either go for the nutmeg you might not get the nutmeg, but as long as you beat your man, you're gonna be okay. So you're gonna come in. Right. The next trick is something that I don't actually know the name of, but it is essentially a double 90 degree V drag back, or you could basically also call it a one-footed Marseille turn, if you will, but I actually like it a little bit better than the Marseille turn because you can protect the ball a little bit better with your body. So let's say that I want to go to my left. I want to turn to my left, right? If I do the Marseille turn, I have to use my left foot, my weak foot, opening up for Phil to come in and tackle, and I will do the turn. But here, you can do the turn with the same foot, put your body in between Phil and the ball, then drag it back, do the 90-degree spin, drag it back again, and exit the move. It's that simple, and I love it. The last trick doesn't have a name either, I think, so let's call it the Carrasco Filth 3000, because Yannick Carrasco did Santiago Arias from PSV really, really dirty with this move. Phil, come on in here, you're Arias. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Why do you come? Anyways, you're gonna hold off the defender using your arm, then you're gonna roll the ball backwards with the sole of your foot, you turn and as the defender then lunges in, you tap the ball backwards with your left and out with your right. He's gonna go to the floor, try to stop you and gonna look ridiculous. Now this is basically the tap move, it's basically a croquetta but with taps instead of that really smooth motion. And I'll be honest, you probably won't have many chances to do this in matches, when the moment is there, this is total, utter humiliation. And that's what people want, right? Now, the sombrero flick is probably one of the best looking flick ups out there, and I didn't actually learn it until today. So, I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So, you start with your foot dug underneath the ball like this, and then you lift your other leg to kind of jump forward and as you jump forward you kind of want to flick the ball up in the air and then you want to extend your leg to flick it up into the air or over yourself. So let's try it out. Now it's important to think about that the sombrero flick is actually two touches not one. So when you jump it's not a scoop like this, it's actually two touches. So you need to jump forward in order to get that second touch in front of your body. Now I'm not 100% sure, but I do think that this move is brand new in FIFA 22, and it's a banger. So to do this, you basically start by doing a scoop turn towards your weak side, but in the middle of the move, you cut it off and do an elastico outside touch. So you go like this and then go in that opposite direction. For this one, I would actually suggest if you do this move standing still, because if you're running, there's a higher risk of you losing control of the ball when you go from a scoop to that fake outside elastico touch. But the good thing about this move is that you don't have to do the scoop super, super fast, because when you do that elastico turn, you're actually accelerating out of the situation. So you just do the scoop really, really slow, and then go. This move has been a staple in FIFA for many a years now, but it still holds up because it's a great looking move. So instead of doing the, just a boring old rainbow where you clutch it in between your ankles and then flick it over your head and your opponents, you actually want to do this by flicking the ball up like a Ronaldinho flick. 
So when you're approaching your opponent, you go like this and then you turn your body 90 degree like this and then do a Ronaldinho flick sideways. And now with the foot that you did the flick with, you actually want to heal the ball over yourself and your opponent. With this move though, it's important to think about the timing because if you do it too early, you might end up doing the advanced rainbow straight into your opponent's possession. And if you do it too late, you're gonna collide. Have you ever thought that the regular elastico, the boring old elastico, is a little bit too grounded and down to earth? Well, I've got the trick for you because this is the air elastico and it's basically just like the good old elastico, but in the air. Is it useful in a game? No. Is there a huge risk of you getting your legs broken in a football game if you ever try to attempt it? Yes, but I'm gonna try to teach it to you guys anyway. So a regular elastico is basically just an outside tap, inside tap, or the opposite, inside tap, outside tap. But we're gonna go with the outside to inside because in the air, it's a little bit easier. So you could flick it up like this and then do that same motion that you do on the ground, but in the air. Now, because the ball is in the air, it's a little bit more difficult to get the timing and the touch right. But if you train hard enough, you'll get there eventually. The first skill is something we can call the um, super official step over tappy tappy 3000. <laughs> the name is not important though. The important thing is that you create that space. And if you have the defender in front of you, you can do that by stepping over the ball with the leg in which direction you want to go. So I want to go that direction. I step over the ball with this leg from the outside. Then I use the inside of the other foot to tap the ball forward. And then I bring the step over leg back and push the ball away with the outside of the foot. Now, hopefully this means that once you do the step over, you're gonna trick the defender to put all his body weight on this foot, meaning that hopefully the tappy tap emotion can be quick enough to create a meter of space for you to do something clever with the ball. So, whoa, zack, zack. And you know guys, creating that space is what we're after here. And thankfully you can also do that with this move called the Croquetta Deluxe. Chef's kiss. Anyways, what you're essentially trying to do here is to bait the defender to stick out his leg so you can Croquetta around him and laugh all the way to the bank. And you can do that by tapping the ball with the inside of your foot while dropping your shoulder. And that's important, dropping your shoulder to get him to stick out a foot and then you basically Croquetta around him. And it can be a little bit tricky to do at speed the first time. So you can break it up and focus on getting the tap, then taking a step and then do the croquetta. And do that until you feel confident with it. And then you can basically do it at a high speed. Now guys, the third skill is one of my favorites to watch. And it's actually something Jolter has told you in an earlier video. And it's called the double step over, which is great because you get to wrong for the defender, not once, but twice for maximum devastation and humiliation. Now the trick here is to basically make them believe that you're making a body feint on the first step over, and then you want them to commit because they think that you're gonna take a touch going back in that direction. However, you're not gonna take a touch. You're gonna do another step over, twist your body, sell the move, and then make a little tap back to the original direction to laugh all the way out of the move. But guys, the key here is to sell the second step over. You want the defender to put as much weight as possible on this foot as you do the second step over. And you can do that by making the first step over. When you make the second one, you twist your entire body and your head to really make them believe that you are going that direction. However, this means that once they're caught, whoop, little tap with the outside and you're gone. So, at speed, it looks like this. Yes, see ya. You can also whip out the roll back flick, which is basically where you're trying to trick the defender into sticking his or her foot out so you can flick the ball over them and look like a flicking boss. That was terrible. But anyways, this is only a good idea to do if there's a bit of space in behind the defender trying to close you down. So what you do here is to try and bait them into sticking out the foot by doing a little series of sole drag backs. And once they do stick out their foot, you do a slightly more powerful drag back, and then you flick the ball up and forward with the very toe off your foot. Now the key here 
is to nail down that lift. It's basically just pointing your very toes a little bit upwards. So maybe start to drag the ball, flick the ball up, standing still. And once you feel you have that, you can combine it and chain it, that series of little drag backs, and basically be ready to roast the defender if you're ever stuck in the corner. So this trick is flicking awesome. I did it again. And then we have one of the oldest tricks in the book, the fake shot soul roll. Now this is basically all about conviction. So you need to make the defender think that they have to block a shot or a cross. If you don't get them to do that, it's unlikely that this trick will work. So here, you really have to sell the move. Basically, you come in, you take a touch to either side, and then you have to drop both your shoulder and your hips and really put some energy into the motion as if you were indeed going to make a shot or a cross. Then, just before you hit the ball, you can either roll the ball out to the side with the sole for extra style points, or quite simply just take a touch away. That's all up to you, as long as you promise me that you sell the move. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. So come in, out to the side, whoop, that way. So the first move is a nice one, where you want to wrong foot the defender and then beam off in the other direction. We can call it the go fish. I guess, you'll understand why in a bit. But basically it works really well if you're face to face with the defender where you can take a little touch towards them and then make a little tap touch to the side as the bait. Because hopefully they will start making a step in that direction already. And this is where you sell the move, guys. So you basically make a little body feint going that direction as if you wanna take a longer touch. But instead of touching the ball, you're gonna step over it and immediately start turning your body. And when your support leg then hits the ground, you can explode off in the other direction. Because if the defender takes the bait, they will put all their weight going this direction, making your job a hell of a lot easier. The second move is something we can call the uh, tap, step over, tap, I guess, again. And it's basically a classic tap outside step over move that you can then finish off depending on where the defender goes. Now, I don't know how many defenders would do this, but if you make your tap outside step over and they cover this area, you just push it out with your weak foot like you would normally do. However, if they take the bait, when you throw that body feint, they cover the other area, you can just whoop, make a little cut tap in a 90 degree motion going that way. Their weight is over here. There's a lot of space over here for you. So it's gonna look like this. Come in, step, whoop. It's pretty good if you're caught in a tight space with a defender close to you and you want to get out, make some moves, right? So you basically do a V drag back roll, roll it with the sole of your foot, push it out with the inside of your foot behind your standing foot. But instead of just taking a touch out, where Jeff can come in, run in front of you, take the ball, that sucks. Instead, you do the V drag back, then you grab the ball with the sole of your weak foot and then you roll it back where you came from, stepping over the ball and moving out. And it's particularly nice because not only do you throw potentially a few body feints here, but you also protect the ball at all times from Jeff coming in for a tackle. And if you can do this quickly, <laughs> Jeff is gonna be in a lot of problems. Whoop, 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 wait. It's really simple, which is great because you don't even have to touch the ball. And if you're like me, that means there's a smaller risk of screwing up. But basically, if you've got a defender close to you and there's a pass coming in, you check your shoulder to see if there's a little bit of space behind you. And then when the pass comes, you make a little pre-run. You just let it roll through your legs, just like that. It's very simple. So a little pre-run forward opens up, ball runs through your legs, you turn around. Hopefully the defender will have made that little step forward when you make your pre-run and there's not too many people right behind you, so you can turn, get the ball, make some magic. That's it, let it go. And the final move is something we can call, see ya mate, which is brilliant if the defender is running on your side and you want to shake them off. Now here, you can try and do that by throwing a fake, powerful change of direction with a step over on top. But you're not gonna change direction, that's our little secret. See, what you wanna do here is, you wanna run forward, and then you wanna plant your foot, step over the ball, and turn your entire body as if you're going back in that direction. 
but you're not gonna because as you then lift your support leg to take the touch back where you came from, you don't touch the ball, but ooh, you push it forward instead and hopefully there will be a bit of space to run into because the defender will have to do two things. A, when you break very powerfully, they're gonna have to break as well. And also because you change direction so quickly, they're gonna have to try and catch up, believing, hopefully, that you will go that direction. But as we all know, you're not gonna. See you, mate. Next, Mares also frequently does a variation of the Cruyff turn. Now, a traditional Cruyff turn is where you turn the full 180 degrees. But Mares instead more uses it as a 130 degrees chop. Again, this is a fake shot, but instead of striking the ball, you transition into doing a Cruyff turn where you tap the front of the ball with the inside of your foot and almost scoop it backwards behind your standing leg. It's really good if you're close to the defenders because it keeps your leg between them and the ball, thus protecting it a bit more. But it's also a little risky because there will be a split second where you will have to turn and thus won't have full control or protection over the ball. So again, you need to sell the fake shot to fixate the defender. And then it should be easy to set yourself up to create some mayhem. And finally, we have the classic Mares chop, which is a fake shot, but with a more powerful directional touch at the end. So instead of doing a normal fake shot with a normal touch, you actually almost chop the ball with the instep of your foot to make it change direction very sharply and powerfully. You can also use it to simply stop the ball if you want to buy yourself a bit more time and survey your surroundings. But the little touch chop works wonders to get the ball away from the defender at an angle. And hopefully that will be enough time for you to whip in a cross or score that goal. And if it doesn't, well, you can always do another one right after. One for the variation of the Marseille turn that you might also know as the roulette. It's been done by Zidane and Maradona and basically everyone with skills. And it's this classic move where you drag the ball back with one foot, turn your body, and then drag the ball, continue the turn with the other foot. However, if you're like me, I'm only really efficient with the Marseille turn when the defender is to my right. And I can drag the ball back with my right foot, continue with the left. However, if we go to the left, this, feels a little bit sketchy and uh, I'm not gonna try that in a match. So if your left foot is also a little bit, should we say, questionable, the one-footed variation of the Marseille turn is a brilliant alternative where you basically do the same thing, but just do both drags with one foot. Now the way to do this is to, of course, stretch out, get the ball, and then you make a little hop with your support foot while you drag the ball back. You do the same thing, turn your body, little hop again, and complete the move. Now, I really like this because contrary to the normal Marseille turn, where you open up and expose the ball a little bit to the defender at first, here you constantly have a body part between the defender and the ball. So one foot of variation, zack, zack, au revoir. Number two is taken directly out of Sergio Busquets' playbook. His signature move, the V drag back where you push the ball out. And it's a really nice move where you basically drag the ball backwards with the sole of your foot and then you complete the V-shape by pushing the ball out again in a 90 degree motion with the inside of the same foot. So you're right, technically, I mean, it's a pretty simple move, but the key is to figure out where and when to do it. And what you want here is for the defender to be lured in and come very, very close to you, almost like uncomfortably close to the point where you would normally pass the ball away. But here, lure them in, let them come close, and then you want to get them off balance. You can do that by taking a little touch to the side, and if they hopefully commit, I mean, they got it, right? They're defenders. You just pull out the little Busquets. We drag back and show them who's boss. So, boom, ha, ha, bye. we move into slightly more flashy territory, but it's still a really useful move this, if you've got a defender in your back and you want to throw them off balance. Now here, you basically start by rolling or dragging the ball once or twice, 
Then you tap the ball back with your weak foot and tap the ball out again quickly with the same foot that you did the rolls with. Because this is really, really useful with all the little changes of direction to get the defender to follow you and hopefully get them off balance. The key here is just to do it quickly because if you take too many steps in between the touches, I mean, that is not going to fool anyone. So do it quick, throw them off balance like this. Wait. At number one, we got the inside step over Rabona cut into something. Great start, am I right? So you start by doing an inside step over with your strong foot and then followed by an outside touch with your weak foot in a Rabona type motion like this. And now this is where it gets tricky because you want to go in the opposite direction. So you do inside step over, Rabona, and then touch the ball with the outside of your standing foot. But you do it all in one motion. So it will look something like this. At number two, we got the Elastico Hocus Pocus, and it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a mix between the Elastico and the Hocus Pocus. The Elastico looks like this, and the Hocus Pocus looks like this. So you take the first move of the Elastico, which is an outside touch, and then you jump in front with your weak leg to do a Hocus Pocus. So outside touch, Hocus Pocus. And the thing is that this is quite simple to do while standing still, but the real challenge is doing this in speed. So if you have ball control like a fridge or like J-Mike, doing it in speed might be a big challenge, so you might want to lay off it. At number three, we've got the Drag Rabona Cut, and in theory, this move is actually pretty simple but in practice, it is very, very difficult. So you want to drop your shoulder and touch the ball with the inside of your foot in the direction you want to fool your opponent. So this direction, and then you want to drop your shoulder in the other direction and touch the ball with the outside of your foot. And now this is where you fool your opponent straight up because you want to do the drag Rabona cut like this. So you start by doing inside touch, outside touch, Rabona touch. Simple, right? At number four, we got the jumping elastico. And for this elastico, we want to do an inside elastico, so an inside touch and an outside touch. And to do the jump at the same time as you're doing the elastico, you want to go get started with the elastico, and then when you touch the ball, you jump with your weak foot. So it's basically inside touch, like that. But you want to get a little bit of air underneath the ball when you do this move, so that the ball goes up into the air, like this. When would you ever use this move? I genuinely don't know, but you can actually use this as a fake shot as well if you want to do that in a game and then you pass it, you, you know, you want to pass it in that direction and you like that. So uh, good luck using this in a game. <laughs> And the final move of the five skills that requires amazing ball control, we got the Guts of Flick Air Elastico. Would you ever do this in a game? No, you would not, but I'm gonna teach it to you regardless. So you start by doing a Guts of Flick, which is basically rolling the ball onto your own foot and let it bounce up in the air. So like that. And then you wanna do a toe bounce as the ball comes down. So when the ball's in the air, you drop it down and toe bounce with your weak foot. And now you just want to add the creme de la creme of this move by doing an air elastico outside inside with your strong foot. So get to flick, toe bounce and air elastico and you're done. Third move is a soul roll panna, which is quite simple, but executed to perfection, especially when Vinicius Jr. did it against Galatasaray. Here, he's caught in the corner by two defenders, but by stopping the ball with the sole and rolling it back and turning his body, he allows himself to open his body and face the defenders, giving him the advantage. And then he can relatively easily do a panna on the defender. And it was in that moment, the defender knew he messed up.
Well, you know the Elastico. It's simply just a touch with the inside of your foot and then the outside of your foot or vice versa, depending on what direction you're going. And a triple Elastico, it just makes sense because you just add another touch. So depending on what direction you're going, if you're going left, you have to go with the inside, outside, and then inside again. And if you're going right, I'm right-footed, outside, inside, and then outside again. But the thing is, you can't really do the triple elastico in the same pace as you do a regular elastico, so you need to adjust your pace after the move. And since you can add one, you can obviously add more, but I feel like a triple elastico is the limit. For this one, I'm gonna need a defender, and since Jeff is on holiday, I brought the camera bag, aka Cameron bag Jerome, or a suitcase CS. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, so a regular pass and run is basically when you're facing a defender, you pass the ball on one side and you run on the other one. Fairly simple. So for the advanced pass and run, you actually wanna do the opposite. You want to run on the other side and pass it on the other side. So in order to be able to do this, you want to do a reverse elastico around your opponent. But you want to do this while leaning back as much as possible to gain that extra momentum and pace to pass the defender. This skill might not seem like a lot, but when done right, it will turn heads and make people gasp. The trap is basically just you fooling your opponent that you're losing control over the ball, i.e. the bait, and then reeling the ball back into your control while your opponent is reaching for the ball. And by that point, you're already accelerating out of there. So tap the ball with your toe towards your strong side without moving your upper body, and then drag the ball back with your sole and accelerate away. Funny name equals funny move, and while I doubt that this will be done in a game in the near future, I do think that this move has potential to go viral on the interwebs if done in a pickup game. Start by rolling the ball onto your own foot and then flick the ball with your toes over your opponent. After that, you can sit back, relax, and enjoy all the cheers and screams from everyone watching while your opponent's career has officially been ended. This is arguably the sauciest move that I've taught you guys on this channel, Ever. This Elastico-esque skill move derives from the sandy pitches of South Africa and the Kasi flavor style of football that is being played there. And instead of doing a boring old Elastico, you slide the outside of your foot down from the top of the ball and stop. This move is best served with a side of shoulder drops and applause from the audience, as this will surely raise a few eyebrows. And maybe a few scouts too, who knows. Although this move might not have a name, I think what it does have is a lot of flavor and is an incredibly effective move that you can use as a winger. Essentially, it's an inside step over into a Rabona stop to shield the ball followed by a regular drag back and go. There are quite a few things here that could go wrong, but when done right, this is a killer move. Staying in South America, everyone needs some Brazilian flair to their game. So why not remember this Coutinho skill for your next game? Now what you want to do is cutting in from the touchline, actually do a fake shot with your strong foot and then tap the ball a little bit. And then quickly, straight after that, you use the inside of your other foot to take a touch back where you came from. And if you do this quickly enough, you've got all the time in the world. Here's a good one for you, the heel V drag back. In situations where the Marseille turn isn't optimal, a simple drag back with your sole and a tap behind your heel might actually do the trick. Just make sure that there's actually space behind you to run into so you don't come crashing into a defender because that usually loses you the ball. If you can perform the fake shot with confidence, you'll get a high way of free space. So listen closely and then watch Philip ducking for his life. Now what you do here is stopping the ball close to the touchline and facing the defender. You basically want to set up your body as if you're going to make a cross. So start the movement, but then you deliberately miss hit the ball by swinging your leg really strongly and not really shooting the ball at all. It just has to lie entirely still. Now there are two outcomes here. One, the defender doesn't fall for it, in which case you can go back to trick number four and do that instead. But if he does fall for it and actually falls flat on his back like happened with Nui, you can do it like he did and just speed away with a big smile on your face. Now we're getting nautical because the third move is something we can call fish and chips. It's a terrible name, but it's something as simple as a little chip over the defender's foot. 
Because if you're in a 50-50 duel for a loose ball, then you can see that you're gonna get there first. Something as simple as a little chip over the defender's foot will buy you a lot of time and space. Because the fact that the defender is running towards you means that his or her momentum is going in that direction, so away from you, and that's something you like because you're going the other way. And also the fact that you're chipping the ball over them means that you're getting out of the way, minimizing, 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 minimizing That's not even a word! the risk of you getting injured. So basically, whoop, little chip, and uh, yeah, eat your fish with it. It's lovely. <laughs> and to wrap things up for this video, we got the wrap. And it's one of my favorite moves out there and it looks way more difficult than it is. It's a move where you catch the ball on the inside of your foot, wrap the ball and your foot around the planted leg without moving. This move is a lot easier to learn if you learn the movement first with a wallet or something that will stay on your foot easier. And if you think that this move is too easy, you can always try the spinning wrap. Now, first of all, guys and girls, if you're still here, you're heroes, but I also think that we earned a subscribe if you haven't done so already. So uh, click that subscribe button with the notifications on. But also, if you don't wanna learn all the skills right now, you can use this video as a library, come back to it, pick and choose what you want to learn next. And speaking of what you want to learn next, well, let us know in the comment section right down below. And then remember that if you need new boots, new training gear, you can go to unisports.com in the link right over there and just go absolutely nuts. We have basically everything. And finally, well, Remember to subscribe, come back next time with those words. I'll be signing off. Cheerio.